Hello, everyone. Welcome. My name is Dave Eagle, and I'm the CEO of a business called Atura. And I'm joined today by Dylan Brown, who heads up our technical team. Today, we're going to share with you a case study of some real world experience using virtual assistants in the asset management industry. Who is Atura? Atura is a business that designs, builds, and maintains virtual assistants or chatbots for financial services clients. We've been around since 2016, building bots for asset managers, insurance companies, and lenders. Today, we'll be talking, taking you through some of the experience we have specifically in the asset management space. Um, we won't name our clients for compliance reasons, but um, what we're talking about today is all solutions that are in production and are being used every day by customers. So why does a bank even need a bot? Um, we're seeing the impacts of COVID on, on all facets of our lives, um, especially in our working situations. Uh, it's really accelerated some trends that were already happening and there's definitely a move towards work from home. Um, and this has had a twofold impact on, on businesses. Firstly, customers are, ch are changing the way that they interact with businesses. They're no longer tied to office hours. Um, they're working from home in a different situation and, and therefore they are, are using their time differently and, and this nine to five situation which, which happened in the past is no longer, no longer a feature. It's also impacting the way that staff of asset managers are able to, to service their customers. So working from home, the limitations of um, their, their home office setup, and all of these things are, are impacting how these asset managers are, are able to work. Asset managers have seen a squeeze on their fees. Uh, there are a lot of low cost products out there, index tracking funds. Um, which are, are really putting the pressure on what they're able to charge for their services. And at the same time, customers are, are expecting a lot more from their, from their investment partners. And so they're really getting the kind of the squeeze on both ends. But um, this means that asset managers are really trying to get more efficient with their existing team um, and also exploring low cost ways of servicing their customers. All of our asset management clients are really, really focusing hard on, on their clients and their customer experience. And then growing the office, their offering beyond these traditional channels um, and really trying to figure out new ways to engage with, with their customers. Another impact of COVID is, has been how much time people are spending on screens and particularly on their phones. And this means that, that businesses are, are really being forced to, to figure out a way to to engage with their clients who are sitting and spending way more time on their phones than, than they previously did. The latest property legislation requirements is just one of many efforts to improve compliance and data security in the industry. And it's critical that asset managers offer secure, compliant and auditable ways to interact with the business um, that checks all the regulatory boxes. So what did we set out to accomplish with our solutions? So from the outset, we really wanted to automate simple tasks. We wanted to tackle the low complexity, high volume tasks, which take up a lot of time, but don't require a huge amount of um, insight from, from the servicing team. These include things like data requests, what's the price, can I have a fact sheet, um, what's my balance, and can I have a statement, those sorts of things. And that really allows customer service teams who have been inundated with huge volumes of requests to handle this, this increase in, in volumes. Uh, so automating a portion of, of the requests allows them to focus on the, the high touch requests that, that really need a lot of time um, and really a lot of uh, insight into the business and business rules. Customers, we wanted to enable a, a quick and, and hopefully better way to, to engage with the business. Uh, there's no waiting on hold for call center agents, um, and you can really get the latest, most accurate information uh, within a few clicks. 
as a as an asset management business, what this really then gives is a way to to contain the costs of servicing, um, which doesn't really rely on a on a growing uh, servicing team, um, but it really enables kind of greater levels of service uh, at, at a fraction of the cost. We didn't want us to just stop at, at simple tasks. We wanted to ena enable fully transactional capabilities. Um, so that's things like adding to your investments, withdrawing your funds and switching between funds, which ultimately then gives the customer the choice of which channel they wanted to engage with their, their asset management business on. Practically, how do we go about it? From the beginning, we had a fully integrated team made up of both the Tura members and our clients. This gave us the ability to remain fully aligned on all requirements, the development effort as we went along, testing and, and any integration work that we needed. This ability to operate as a single team, I believe was in, instrumental in achieving the results that we did. We really focused on the user experience of the custom built conversations. Um, this incorporated things like the correct language and tone for the business and their customers. Um, we did things like focus group testing uh, and independent user experience reviews to really make sure that we, we got it right and we incorporated a lot of the feedback and, and on an ongoing basis, we made sure that we were we incorporating this feedback and always improving. We adopted a phased approach to, to delivering functionality. This meant we initially tackled the, the simpler sorts of requests, which were not authenticated, um, followed by the authentication um, using things like one-time PIN and USSD security, um, and then adding the transactional capabilities one by one. This gave us the ability to deploy functionality in shorter iterations, which were smaller and more manageable and also less risky. And then lastly, we, we adopted a fairly typical agile approach. We had two or three week sprints that included planning, development, testing and demos uh, and all the other agile ceremonies such as daily stand ups and, and retrospectives. I'm now going to hand over to Dylan to go through some of our, our technical approach. Thanks, Dave. Uh, so I'm going to be talking about how we actually go about building our bots. Um, when uh, at Atura, we build bespoke bots, as Dave said. Uh, there's lots of different approaches to building bots, but this is what we've found to be successful for us and our clients. Uh, so that means we have to design custom flows for our clients. Um, and from there, we actually have to work to turning that into a bot. Uh, assuming that the user uh, for your bot knows what to say to the bot is a path to failure. Uh, either the user says something that your bot can't handle and your bot looks bad, or even worse, they don't know what to say at all and the user gets nowhere. Um, so we uh, build flows or dialogues to help guide a user's journey through the bot. Um, this helps them uh, get um, do transactions or get statements, uh, as you can see in the example here. Uh, and then from there, we actually have to turn that into the end user experience that the, the user sees. Uh, so in order to actually build out the bots, uh, it's very important to make sure you're leveraging the right services because this bot space is a very fast moving space. So you don't want to get uh, left behind by your competitors. So we've tried to leverage uh, Microsoft's bot services. Uh, when it comes to building our bots. Uh, there's Microsoft Bot Framework, which helps with building out the dialogues. Uh, there's Direct Line, which helps with the messaging between the users and the bot. Uh, and then there's Lewis, which helps with the natural language processing element uh, of the bots. Uh, and then on top of that, uh, we've built, um, we've worked a lot with the Azure Cloud Services uh, to make sure hosting these bots, uh, we can host these bots in a scalable way. Uh, so use things such as the um, function apps, web apps, and the API apps uh, for the majority of the, the bot hosting itself, and then also services like Cosmos DB and table storage, uh, and then of course stuff like Key Vault uh, for certificate and secret management and supporting the bot operations. Um, we've used all of these together to make sure that we can roll out these bots in a, in a scalable way. And then on top of that, uh, we've also built a lot of extensions to Microsoft's uh, bot framework and a lot of these other services. 
So when it comes to stuff like the dialogues, um, we've built a lot of uh, uh, dialogues on top of the Microsoft um, bot framework ones to help us. So we've got something like a branching dialogue, which helps us to enable building out flows uh, in a fluid and quick manner. Uh, we've also got stuff like a slow call dialogue, which helps us when we have API calls to services that are quite slow in their response to make sure we can keep the user engaged during that time. Uh, we've also got something like a polling dialogue, uh, which helps with uh, operations where we need to poll against APIs. And once again, keeping the user engaged is important there. Uh, then we've got a coordinated dialogue and a dialogue launcher, which helps us move between the different dialogues uh, in a fluid way uh, and ensures that the users never get stuck, uh, especially when there's a way we can service them with a different dialogue to the one they're currently in. Uh, and then, of course, we've also got an OTP dialogue, which helps with uh, login and authentication in a secure manner. Um, and all of these are built into our Atura core product. Uh, on top of that, we've also built um, dialogue context extensions that help with the memory of uh, bots during a conversation. Um, we've also got uh, a way for human uh, agents to take over a conversation when a bot uh, is unable to handle it, uh, something we call our service desk. Uh, and this is also packaged into the core product. Um, then we've also got a lot of work we've done around our intent engine to help wrap the natural language processing uh, component in a way that makes it more efficient uh, and allows us to maximize its usage. Uh, and then we've also got a front end web chat widget um, that our clients can embed into their sites that fits in with their branding and styling uh, and also um, supports additional functionality where, where we need it. Um, there's a lot more other dialogues, uh, validators and helpers that we've also built along the way that we won't uh, go into today. When it comes to actually rolling this out for our clients, um, because we have uh, the secure core product that we like to that we want to roll out to multiple different clients, uh, we leverage stuff like uh, NuGet and NPM uh, to package this. Uh, we've also got uh, environment creation scripts to help us uh, uh, build new environments for our different clients. Uh, we've also got a basic bot project that helps us with the initial setup of the solution and just uh, making sure that we can get stuck into the, the meat of building the dialogues for the client and also building their integrations uh, into their uh, APIs. Um, and then, of course, uh, we also have the Poppy and regulatory compliance that Dave was speaking about uh, uh, alongside like data encryption tools and stuff built into the, the core package for our bot. Uh, and then we also have our own analytics tools that we use to help understand and improve on the conversational uh, user experience of our bots. Uh, so all of this has uh, led to quite a few results that we are pretty proud of so far. Um, the customer experience is always the focus for us at Atura. Um, and so we've found that uh, we estimate that we've saved our clients about 20,000 hours uh, this is across more than 200,000 conversations uh, and uh, over 6 million uh, messages. Um, this is uh, important to helping our clients scale up their operations, as Dave was talking about. Uh, interestingly, in all of our clients, we've actually seen an inbound, uh, an increase in uh, inbound calls to contact centers. Um, this kind of correlates with the, the trends Dave was talking about around uh, increase in number of queries or interactions growing uh, across the industry. Uh, and we found that tools like the bot have helped uh, the clients handle these um, increases. Uh, we've seen a 20 to 25 to 30% deflection of incoming requests to the bot, uh, helping these, helping our clients um, actually handle uh, this increase in uh, user interactions. Uh, and then we've also handled over 350 million in investment transactions, which shows that the bot can be a very important tool um, for a serious line of business and also be something that is trusted by the users um, with users willing to, to put large amounts of money through the bot. Uh, interestingly, uh, with this new technology, we've actually also noticed that the age range of our users tends to ex uh, extend a lot further than you might think. Um, so there hasn't really been any hiccups in um, all the demographics uh, picking up this, this kind of uh, new technology and we found that trust isn't really something that is held up by the, the demographics of our clients. So that's been a very interesting uh, thing that we found as well. 
So from all of this, there's a, a couple of important lessons that we would like to share. Um, so one thing that Dave mentioned already, uh, aligning the teams is uh, very key. Um, we found that uh, this is probably something that extends to every software development uh, process, but especially with the bots, there's a lot of work that goes into building the flows and making sure that we have the right communication with our clients uh, means that we uh, ensure that there's less rework or delays uh, which are needed across the board. Also, we often have to consume um, our clients' APIs for integrations for transactions or uh, our clients' other um, partners. And so that means we there's a lot of communication uh, that's required in those teams and aligning everything there is very important. Uh, one also shouldn't underestimate the importance of well-considered marketing uh, and communications plan. Um, so we've seen that obviously Organic growth does exist in our bots, um, but we see drastic spikes in usage after the uh, appropriate marketing materials goes out to the, the client's user base. Uh, it's important to notify the clients that you have this new channel, obviously, in order to make sure that the, the users that want to engage in this channel know about it and know about the functionality, especially when we've done phase rollouts of our bots. Uh, being able to constantly update the users on this feature is now available a bot and now this feature is available uh, really helps um, increase usage. Uh, there's obviously drastic spikes as the communications go out, but we've seen that those actually seem to hold for uh, a couple of weeks in increasing the usage, meaning that the users that are the new users that are coming in are actually finding something that is is helpful to them. Um, all software obviously requires ongoing maintenance, um, but, but with bots, there's a couple extra factors that we need to make sure we maintain. Um, the language training for natural language uh, processing systems is an ongoing process. Uh, and so we refine this with a lot of the data we get from our analytics software, uh, which also helps us inform, uh, in, helps inform us of user demand for new features. Um, and also other information that the bot could provide that it isn't currently uh, aware of. Um, refining this and the conversational user experience is key to ensuring that uh, users can complete the tasks that our bots are actually set out to help them with. Um, these are, are, are three of the most uh, important lessons that we've learned for bot development. Um, so hopefully we, um, we hope that these can be helpful to everyone out there. Um, thanks a lot for listening to our talk. Uh, in a quickly changing space like this, we think it's very important to be sharing ideas uh, and sharing our learnings. So if there's anything you want to chat to chat about, uh, you can contact us uh, on the, at the email address you can see here, uh, or if you'd like to work with us. Um, thanks everyone. <laughs>